So our next presenter, uh, she should be coming up in a little bit, is Elizabeth Lizbeth Simpson. Let's give her a big hand. So I just have um, four letters for our last presenter, G-L-O-W. Okay. Holla back if you got a body, people. Got a body with you, right? The little dangly bit hanging below your neck that you carry with you. This is where I live. I'm a corporal presence, and there's no getting away from this. At least I'm not going to get out of it alive. Um, home is a place that you rely on. The timing is different. You know, it's longer. I've got, like, I could stretch. Anyway, uh, <laughs> home is a place that you can rely on. It's a place that I can find my toothbrush at night. It's a place I can find the perennials that I planted last year. It's different in different places, homes in landscapes, triple-deckers in the woods of New England, shotguns in the flats of New Orleans, farmhouses in the mountains of West Virginia, and the oddly attractive Urbana, Illinois. This is a cottage that I've been going to since 1932. It's built by my great-grandfather. I live in a family history. I'm a grandchild of the Depression, navigate the shadows of alcoholism. I eat green, green casserole, and I put jimmies on my ice cream. And where I come from, we say things like, il pacho, and stand up and let them know you're here. I'm intertwined in the present and historic ecosystem. I used to be absolutely outraged that adults would be stupid enough to pollute the one place that we can live. But as anyone who smokes, drinks, or eats knows, sometimes you do things that might kill you because it makes living worthwhile in the meantime. But I think we can design other things. Infusing the physical is the social. It's where we get our ideas of what's what. It informs what we have as etiquette. It gives us things like prisons. We've got what we have because we've made it, and we can make new things if we'd like to. To make new things in 2004, I brought myself to New Orleans, Louisiana, to join folks who'd worked for generations to undo our cultural inheritance of white supremacy. Sorry, that's a downer statement. <laughs> this work was interrupted pretty quickly by Hurricane Katrina, which was an ecological event. It's a physical circumstance that pulled back what was happening to reveal the social dynamics that were underneath. The most personal aspects of our lives were exposed. Um, our basic needs were laid bare, put in public view. They were denied in some cases. And the contents of our kitchens and the conversations that we had around our kitchen tables were put out for everyone to see, sometimes not to be heard. On the personal level, there were things like armed white men going around in pickup trucks, killing black men who looked suspicious. At least 15 men were killed. Organizationally, the Red Cross refused tons of food and let lots of it rot because they didn't want to let go of the distribution. Nationally, the National Guard refused to let hundreds and hundreds of people who showed up with boats to help. They refused them their help. Um, helping people get rescued from tops of buildings. And governmentally, and this just... Mm, <clears throat> the state invested hundreds of thousands of dollars to barricade public housing so that the people who had been evacuated with one-way bus tickets couldn't get back, couldn't get back in, couldn't get back their stuff. And their stuff was bagged up in trash bags and put on the curb by strangers. One senator said... We couldn't solve the public housing crisis, but God could. Things looked unusual, you know, things looked weird and out of place, but actually we were seeing the dynamics that have always been present in this country. In the aftermath of Katrina, I saw what I had been talking to folks about while I was there, and it was overwhelming to see it in its blatancy and know that I was unfortunately right at a time that I, I wish I had been not right. Um, when I was evacuated, people asked me really juicily if I'd lost everything. And I disappointed them, because unlike folks who had been living there for generations, I hadn't. And I hadn't lost everything, and folks seemed a little crestfallen about that. Perhaps they were seeking to put a little distance between themselves and me. Um, folks seemed to want Katrina to be an exception, something unusual that they could be not implicated by, but have sympathy for from a safe distance. New Orleans became a hot spot for good intentions, and I kept 
telling people, why are you coming all the way down here to address the issues that exist in your community? We're connected socially, we're connected geographically, we share the same water basin. Um, we're also connected infrastructurally, because a, one major complaint was why do people live there in this place that's been so altered and isn't really a great place to live. But we have um, levees here as well, and we, we actually, in 2011, a levee was blown up in Missouri and flooded 130,000 acres of farmland and flooded hundreds of homes just a couple hundred miles south of us. So we're not so far. Also, we are connected in terms of our social system, and the dynamics of racism and white supremacy that exist in New Orleans are certainly clear here. Um, there's at least 425 sundown towns, towns that uh, blow a whistle to let black folks know they need to leave town at 6 o'clock. Um, some of those whistles still blow, and just in case you're not from here, don't worry, there's 10,000 of them across the country. So you can't really get away. And when I moved here, um, I realized that I hadn't actually lost, uh, I hadn't moved away from New Orleans, right? Dynamically, I was still in the same place, and the work I was doing there is the work I need to do here. But to come home and see where you live and have it be in the place that you really call home is a little too close. And to name the things that are happening where you wake up and sleep can be really intense, especially if you try to take it on yourself. So ye of Puchakucha, I want to let you know that you are a gorgeous site of agency, and you are not alone. And I invite you to claim when and where you live here. We didn't create the circumstances we were born into, but we're responsible to it. And denial or blame can seem easier, but I invite you instead to courageous action. And when that's not possible, to its sister, which is grieving. Um, after Katrina, I sang this song to myself every morning, and I share it with you. Come home, come home. 